Welcome back to the 5 minute project series. This week we're going to get into something a little bit more complex. We're going to do an exploratory data analysis on Olympic data. So we're going to analyze 120 years worth of data and do some basic exploratory analysis. So yeah, let's get started. Yeah, so you'll be, able to you'll be able to find the link to the data set in the description. We're going to do this on Kaggle and this time we're going to use Python just to brush up some Python. First, you're gonna wanna import some libraries. All right, great, let's let that run, and then we're gonna import the data set. For that, we're gonna do dfpd.read underscore csv. First, we're gonna go ahead and check the data by looking at it real quick. All right, here we see we have uh, ID, name, sex, age, height, weight, team, national nationality, games, year, season, city, sport, event, and medal. So the reason uh, it says NAN here, it's because these people don't win a medal. And uh, let's let's go ahead and you know look at the data set even more in even more detail. We're gonna go check uh, check for missing values. What this does is it checks how many null rows are in each uh, variable. So let's see. Great. So now that we have this right here, we're gonna go ahead and do some data cleaning real quick. So you, you see here we have age, height, and weight. They have null values right here. We don't care about medals because we know that the null values in medals are because they didn't win a medal. So we want to figure out how to fix this or clean this right here with age, height, and weight. There are so many ways to do this. You can drop the null values or you can do like uh, average imputation or median imputation, etc. I'm going to do average imputation for this specific data set. Feel free to try out all the other types of uh, techniques you can use. I would recommend doing some research in this area specifically so you understand why and when you should use specific techniques. Great, so now that we have no null values except for metals, we can go ahead and do some uh, descriptive statistics. So for that, we're just gonna do df.describe. So this just describes the data set. Here we see that every single variable has the same count and all the continuous variable statistics are right here. We see the mean, median, max, first quartile, third quartile. So this, these statistics kind of help because we can kind of understand uh, when the data starts from 1896, the average weight per participant in kilograms, the average height, you know, the average age. So yeah, that's, that's, that's useful information to kind of get a grasp of what data we're working with. And usually with uh, data exploration, uh, we want to use descriptive statistics a lot, especially with machine learning too. You want to get into understanding the data set before deciding what model is best for your data set and uh, what you want to do. Great. So now that we know that, uh, let's go into some useful information. Let's let's try and figure out which nationality or which country won the most medals. Great. So now we see the U.S. has won the most medals and that Russia is top ten. So now we understand the top ten countries and we can go into more detail and see. You know, let's see. Uh, top 10 athletes who won the most medals and we're not going to go specifically into like gold medals We're just going to go medals together and group silver bronze and gold together. Great. Yeah, this is accurate Michael Phelps won 28 medals uh, so far and uh, Dara Grace Torres, there's a lot of names here that I don't know, but yeah cool Michael Phelps is the leading athlete in the Olympics I hope you're following and you see how this information is useful. Like uh, knowing knowing these 10 are the top most successful athletes, we can do more analysis to determine what attributes they have that lead them to the success in their fields. We could dive deeper and look at the sports they're representing their countries within or the sports they're winning medals in and uh, determine you know if height is a factor there or if weight is a factor there, etc. Great, now that we know that, let's look at uh, number of athletes per sport. So now we can see these are the top 10 sports in the Olympics. Uh, it starts with athletics as number one and wrestling as number 10. I'm assuming athletics includes like short distance and long distance running. Alpine skiing though, I, I've never heard of alpine skiing, but that's interesting. Well, I would have thought other sports would be uh, more popular, but uh, yeah, so it's also important to note that uh, we, we rank popularity here based on the number of athletes participating per sport. So yeah, obviously athletics would have a higher number of athletes participating because, you know, there's like four by ones, etc. And uh, wrestling is a one-on-one -on -one sport, so that makes sense why it's uh, ranked at number 10. Great, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and do a plot for, uh, yeah, let's look, at, let's look at some attributes and let's see if we can make a correlation between weight and height and medals, like if they won a medal and what their weight and height was to see if uh, there's any pattern we can deduce there. Great, so what we've done here is basically made a plot of uh, weight and height to see the correlation between weight and height and uh, whether they won a medal and what type of medal they won. Cool. So yeah, great. Now that we see this plot right here, we can understand that 
Uh, there's obviously there's a lot of people who didn't win medals. Obviously with this graph, it's kind of hard to see because there's a lot of blue and blue is a label for no medal. So let's uh, adjust it real quick to look at a graph with the, just those who won medal. So here we see just a plot of uh, people who won medals and it's kind of hard to make a correlation because there's people winning medals from the lower end of the spectrum and uh, there's also people winning medals in the higher end of the spectrum. So there's really no way to make a comprehensive con uh, conclusion here. But if you want to split it up into sex and go deeper and uh, look into, you know, is it more likely for a female to win if they are heavier or taller or uh, vice versa? And obviously you can go in more depth if you want. But the point of this project was just to uh, get you guys to dip your toes in data cleaning and data visualization with exploratory analysis. And now you have done that. So this project right here will show that you know how to deal with null values. It also will show that you know how to do some basic exploratory data analysis. And uh, that is very useful when it comes to data analytics. A lot of jobs out there require data analysts to know how to do EDA. So this is a really useful skill. I recommend you guys going in more depth and doing more research specifically with this project because there's a lot you can do. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. We're gonna go in more detail and go deeper into the analysis next time. We're gonna improve our skill set and go deeper and make more complex projects so that we can put more worthy projects on our resume and build our portfolio to make it stronger. Uh, anyways, I'll see you guys next week.